because it looks quite different. You know there are only five countries on the face of the earth that do not offer any paid parental leave to either parent. They are Liberia, Lesotho, Papua New Guinea, Swaziland, and the United States. No paid parental leave to any parent at all. You know, if you look at the, at the way Europe, European countries, I know Europe is from Venus, Europe is from Mars, but if you look at the way Europeans have organized family policy, there's on-site childcare, there's flex time, there's lots of part-time work, there's lots of family-friendly policy. We get family values. They get real policy. In Norway, each couple gets 16 months, soon to be 18 months, of paid parental leave at 80% of salary, paid by the government. Of those, 14 months, can be, can, you know, the, the, the couple gets to divide 14 months as they like, which usually means she takes it. But those other two months, he and only he can take it. Those are called the daddy days and men must can take it or they lose it, right? It's just a use it or lose it policy. Um, and so 94% of, of Norwegian men take paid parental leave. In Norway, each grandparent gets one month of fully paid grand parental leave for each grandchild. <laughs> That's what family values actually look like, right? That happens when you are floating on a sea of oil and the government owns it. <laughs> and they say, and, and basically they say, what can we do with this money? I know, let's support our people. <laughs> what a funny idea. <laughs> so, okay, well, oh, one more question. Got it. So if, if our ideas of gender come from our culture and our, and our social learning, and um, I agree with most of what you said, and I, I like the idea of having new behaviors, but behaviors aren't necessarily cultural, they don't give us a new identity. Mm -hmm. And the way you describe, especially with what you said about M&M, is how easy it is to lose your masculine identity. I'm wondering what you have in mind for new models and new modes of being mm -hmm. that may exist for men to start to model and imitate and, and, and work into since we yeah. don't really have anything, any place to go. Yeah, it's a good question. I I think there's two pieces, there's two parts of, of my answer. The first is I'm not interested in sort of the, the, the casual you know, rejection of the entire package of masculinity um, and its replacement with some kind of either androgynous or neo-feminist ideal. What I'm interested, I think that there's a lot of parts about traditional masculinity that speak to me that I think we can use. So I don't think this has to be so scary. Like, if you're gonna tell me that I have to let go of this, what do I get in return, okay? So um, so I, I think, for example, ideas of, you know, these are human traits, they're not simply, but they've always been coded as masculine. The idea of doing the right thing. Standing up for what's right despite the consequences. When I was a boy, one of the, one of the most important books in my life was, was uh, Profiles and Courage. And it was about men who took a, took a stand they knew it was going to cost them their career. And they did it anyway because they knew it was right. Right? So I thought, well, that's part of what it means. I mean, to me, when I was a child, I thought, that's what a man does. You do the right thing no matter what the costs are. Right? Um, so I think we can, we can use that. I think that there are lots of people in lots of different institutions who believe in those ideals of honor and integrity. And those have always been, the, the, many of those have been coded as masculine. Women have been coded as too flighty, too emotional, et cetera, to, to have that kind of, you know, sort of solid honor, integrity kind of mom. Let's use it. I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to using those kinds of things to, to, to say to men, you, there are many parts of what you think it means to be a man that are valuable. Now, the fact that women can also do them, we'll get there, right? We know these are human qualities. But what I'm saying is that we don't have to throw everything out. Um, and the other thing, so so basically, that, that's all I would I, that, that's all I would say about that. Okay, you get the last word. Thank you very much. Uh, so, so I think we've talked about this question before, but but earlier you mentioned that uh, also with M and M that the word drag and other gay rights things is no longer homophobic, but it just means. 
Let me, let me, sorry, because I, something that you just, mentally just sounded like you're saying that it no longer means that it's bad to get a premium from grocery store. I don't know what the list just means that you're using that to do it just to designate something that you no longer masculine. But I think the masculinity is being inherently based on a heteronormative like, idea. So if you're saying that something is gay, Oh, I'm not saying that. I, 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 it, it, I am saying the fat. What, what, uh, what, what my friend C.J. Pasco calls the fad discourse in school, or um, in, her, in her book *Dude, You're a Fad*, or what I talk about in *Masculinity is Homophobia*, um, or that what that so gay means. You know, uh, last week my son, age 10, got was, we were just getting ready to go to school, and he got the, this is the first time he got a text that said. Zachary, you are so gay. And he laughed and he said, you know we've been waiting for this. <laughs> because we were talking about it. He said, you know, guys are already saying things like, that's so gay, what does that mean? You know? Now, so, so what I'm suggesting is that the, the, yes, of course, if you look at what, where it comes from, of course it's about homophobia. Of course that's true. And of course, the, but what I'm saying is that in, in the casual banter, uh, the casual sort of daily conversation in which that's used, it doesn't, its initial motivation is not simply an association with gayness or with femininity. It's just like stupid. Thank you.